One thing we're not short of in Ireland is rain. According to Met Aaron, our east and southeast coasts receive, on average, 150 days of rainfall each year, rising to 225 days per year in parts of the west. This rainfall can reach anything in our landscape houses, farms, fields, crops, roads, and industry. As rainwater accumulates and flows downhill, substances which may be present on any surface in its path can be swept downhill with it. There is a myriad of these substances which can end up in our rivers and lakes and even in our reservoirs. To keep check on the presence of potentially harmful substances in our water, the Irish Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, and local authorities undertake an extensive monitoring programme of water quality in our inland rivers, lakes, estuaries, coastal waters, and also of our drinking and bathing waters. The public can access the results of these programmes on the EPA's website, but it appears that a very small proportion of people actually do. In 2006, the EPA conducted a survey of public awareness around water quality monitoring programmes in Ireland. It found that nationwide, only 17% of respondents were aware that any monitoring of drinking water supplies was performed at the preceding 12 months, and only half of those respondents were aware of the results of the monitoring analysis. It was also found that merely half of households were prepared to drink tap water without any further purification or filtration. And the survey concluded that there was a generally high level of distrust of drinking water monitoring schemes in Ireland. Regarding recreational waters, a survey was conducted of persons over the age of 18 who were either recreational water users or who were knowledgeable of water conditions in their locality. In this survey, respondents were asked to rate water quality at locations they were familiar with and were subsequently asked what information had informed their assessment. 73% of respondents relied purely on their own visual inspections to determine water quality, with only 5% relying directly on EPA or local authority information. Unfortunately, visual inspections of water quality can lead to inaccurate assessments as muddy or turbid water is often incorrectly assumed as being polluted, whereas many harmful pollutants which may be present are often invisible to the naked eye. If you can't tell just by looking at it, how would you know if a river or lake was healthy, or if the water was pure enough to drink or to swim in? My name's David McCormick, I'm the ecologist here at the Tralee Bay Wetlands Centre, and during the course of this video I'm going to show you exactly how you would go about doing that. Because we are governed by European law, we are required to comply with the requirements of the Water Framework Directive, which is the primary policy instrument to use in managing water quality in our rivers, lakes, estuaries and coastal water bodies. The Water Framework Directive is accompanied by a series of other directives including the Drinking Waters and Bathing Waters Directives. Stringent monitoring programmes have been developed for each type of water body which involve a series of comprehensive tests to gain an all-round indication of the level of aquatic health. In an ideal world, we would be able to keep track of all of our water bodies. However, in practice, this is quite challenging. Under current legislation, catchment sizes under 10 square kilometres are not actually covered by the Water Framework Directive, meaning that we have no legal requirements to monitor our small streams, ponds and small headwater streams. If you consider the fact that small first and second order streams are estimated to constitute over half of the length of our entire river network in Ireland, and that they can carry pollution from that entire area into our larger water bodies, this is potentially a huge problem for the future. In reality, there simply aren't the resources or facilities available to pay highly skilled staff to monitor water quality in all of our small streams and ponds. So what can we do to improve the situation? Probably the best method for examining the overall health of streams, rivers and lakes is by using a method called biomonitoring. Biomonitoring uses changes in biological responses to assess water quality. Often the organisms that live within any body of water are the best indicator of its overall health. Some countries have developed volunteer programmes to train members of the public in freshwater biomonitoring techniques, but in Ireland we still rely on highly trained specialists to conduct our research. Recognising this limitation, the Small Streams Risk Score was developed as a rapid field method for assessing the water quality in first and second order streams in Ireland. This is an entry level biomonitoring technique which recommends that trainees have at least some prior experience before sampling. How easily can members of the public learn these techniques? Let's find out. Uh, hi, I'm John. Um, my background is music mostly. Um, I don't have any experience or very little in uh, ecology studies or wildlife. 
studies anything like that so I'm keen to have a go and learn a bit about it and um, I've thrown myself in. Hi I'm Judy and my background is economics. I have no study done in science, I actually didn't even do it for the leaving cert but I come up here to Glen Tenasic all the time and I just look at the beauty and the scenery and stuff like that but I have no clue what's going on underneath it so I'm really excited to find out. Hi I'm Steve, uh, background in construction and uh, carpentry and I'm just, I don't know much about fresh water, I'm just here to find out more about biomonitoring. While our rookies get kitted out in some essential clothing, we can explain a little bit more about biomonitoring. There are many biomonitoring indices which have been developed for different regions and for different types of water body. While you can use fish, plants or algae in biomonitoring surveys, the small stream's risk score relies on benthic macroinvertebrates as indicators of aquatic health. Despite a long history of using macroinvertebrates in pollution surveys, many people know little about these common organisms. Benthic macroinvertebrates can be found in pretty much any stream, river, lake or wetland. Benthic means bottom of the stream or lake. Macro means you can see it with your naked eye and invertebrate means without a backbone. Many but not all benthic macroinvertebrates are insects and many only spend their immature larval stage in the water. After they undergo metamorphosis they emerge as the winged adults that we more commonly recognise. A dragonfly or mayfly is a good example of this life cycle. Invertebrates have different adaptations which help them to thrive in different parts of the river, stream or lake, under stones, in plants, in riffles or in pools. These areas within aquatic habitats which have their own distinctive characteristics are called microhabitats. When we sample using the small streams risk score method, we try to attain a sample which contains invertebrates from all the microhabitats in our sample area by sampling diagonally across the river for a total of two minutes ensuring we include riffles if they are present. Because riffled areas are higher in oxygen owing to their rapid flow, there is more likelihood of finding pollution sensitive taxa there. With our team kitted out, it was up to Martin to demonstrate some basic kick sampling techniques. So what we do is we put the, the net with the, with the stream flowing downwards and we kick above the net to, to dislodge anything that's in, in the sand and the gravel. Guys, how are we getting on? So Dave, why would you use biomonitoring as opposed to chemical sampling? Well firstly, chemical sampling is very expensive. And secondly, the sample will only give you a measure of what was in the water right at the time when you take the sample. So say the pollution's only going along at night and you take your sample during the day, then you won't pick it up at all. Whereas with the biomonitoring, you get a better indicator of the long-term situation. And how exactly does biomonitoring work? Well, some plants and animals are more sensitive to pollution than others. So as the level of pollution increases, you would expect the more sensitive animals to disappear from your sample. So we call these sensitive uh, species indicator taxa because they indicate to us basically what the level of stream health is like. Once Martin had demonstrated the basic kick sampling technique, it was time for our crew to have a go. The next step was to learn some basic taxonomic identification techniques and figure out what these tiny creatures can tell us about water quality. So guys, now that you've collected the sample, um, now you need to sort the macroinvertebrates out of it and identify them. Under the uh, small stream risk score system, what's in here is separated into five different groups. So you've got the first group are mayflies, second group are stoneflies, then caddisflies, so your three main groups then uh, worms, snails and flies are all grouped into one. And then the last group is in its own, is a, a species called a cellus, which is a freshwater hoglouse, which is an indicator of bad water, which is why he's in, in his own group. 
So once you've identified them, you give them a rough abundance for each one, and it's literally it's one to five, or more than five, score them separately um, for each of those five groups, and then you'll end up with a score for each group, and then that score combined will give you your score for the stream, which will tell you if it's at risk or not. So uh, the first group that we have under our, uh, our risk score are mayflies, and we have a lovely example here of a flattened mayfly species called Ectineurus. Which is, uh, you'll see him there, he has a, his distinctive, species, distinctive features are he has three long tails, and in fact he's listed in the score here for ease as three tails. And that's distinctive of mayflies as a group as a whole. His body is very flattened like that, and his, uh, his front legs come out like that. And what he does is he sits around and uh, crawls around under stones and clings onto them, grazing algae. He's an excellent indicator of clean water, so if you have a lot of them, then your stream is probably, is, is probably not at risk. Another clean water species we have here, are, uh, this is your second group called stoneflies, which are listed here as two tails, and as you can see his distinctive feature is his two long tails coming at the back of him. Um, again, he, uh, he's, these guys are very intolerant of low oxygen in the water, so um, a lot of them is a good sign that the water is well oxygenated and clean. The third group we have are uh, caddisflies, and these guys are most noted for they build little cases out of stones and, uh, and plant material which they then use as protection for themselves. So their distinctive feature is that they usually have a long abdomen and they usually have little hooks at the end for hanging onto the back of their case so it doesn't get pulled off them. They come in two kinds, you have free living which don't actually build a case and the case caddises. So this guy is actually free living caddis called Hydrocyche. Again not an indicator of polluted water. He's actually interesting, he hangs onto a rock and he spins a silk web in the water which he uses to filter food out. So guys, who wants to have a go? Oh, thanks. Okay, so to identify your beastie here, normally we use what are called taxonomic keys, like the one you have in front of you here. Basically they start um, with what is called class, so is it an insect, is it a snail, is it a shrimp? And then they get more and more specific until you end up with the actual species that you're looking at. So in order to identify right down to species level, usually you need a lot of experience or you need a microscope and, and detailed equipment. So we're just going to go to family level today. Um, so there's your guy there. So first of all, what class do you think he is? How many, how many legs does he have? Six. So he's six legs, so that makes him an insect. So the next thing that you look at with aquatic insects is how many tails does he have? Three. So he's three tails. So three tails would make him a mayfly. Remember that's one of our first groups from the, from the risk score. So now that we know he's a mayfly, now we can try and figure out which family of mayflies he is. So, uh, so if you look down through your key, and it has pictures to help you. So yeah, that's him. Heptogeneidae is the family there. Um, flat mayfly, a good clean water indicator species. And I can tell you that the species is Heptogenia. So if you want to pull out your small streams risk score key there, which is a nice pictorial key um, used, that we use for this system, and you flick through to three tails, which is mayfly, and you'll see here, this is a nice uh, picture of your guy there, family Heptogeneidae, and it gives you the sensitivity scale and score for it there. And why are these invertebrates such good indicators of water quality? Well, we use them because, uh, well, firstly, they're small and they can't move around much, so they're indicators of the water quality over a small area. And secondly, there's a wide range of pollution and oxygen level tolerances across the group, so some of them are very sensitive, some of them aren't. So across that range, you can get a good idea of what's going on. Once our crew had practiced their identification skills and completed their score sheets with a little help, we were able to draw some basic conclusions. Okay guys, so you can see from our results from the sampling today that the water we have here is actually pretty good quality and according to the score here that it's definitely not at risk. I definitely learned a lot today. It was uh, really helpful and um, I would uh, advise anybody to do it. Today was really good. Really educational but fun, you know. The, the, lads, the lads put it across really well and made it really easy for us to understand. I, I just wish I'd done it done it um, before now for this, you know, so 
that was good. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed the day. I really enjoyed it. It was really fun. And I never realised that there was so much in the water. I thought that the water was quite clear except for fish and things. So it was actually really, really interesting. And I think I'll be able to identify a lot of them in future. I found it, I found it easier than, than I expected, to be honest. Um, I thought it was going to be really sciencey and I wouldn't really consider myself that academic. So um, it was put across in such a way that, that it was just really simple to understand and, and, the, and the keys and stuff were really really easy you know you have your insect um, you have your insect and you have your key and it's really it's really easy to identify it um, I'd probably try and get my hands on a key for for future kind of references yeah it's definitely useful it's broadened my knowledge on uh, uh, water quality in streams and rivers in my area so there's a whole world of life in streams and rivers that most people know nothing about but as you can see even knowing a small amount about the small creatures can be a big help